All right, guys, today I'm going to kind of walk you through the process of how I'm changing out my deck bearings on this 2015 Bad Boy MZ Magnum Mower. Now, keep in mind, this is a 2015, I think in 2016, maybe or later, they actually changed that deck on it to where you could flip that up and uh, get to that bearing in the center of that deck. Man, I don't see how it's even possible to do it on this one. I mean, this must have been a... Yeah. The engineer's wife must have been sleeping with a lawnmower mechanic or something. I don't know. But anyhow, if you see here, there's no place. It's all welded. And it goes up here, and it's bolted to the seat frame. So, you know, if they would have made that a little easier by leaving that opened up, where you could hinge that up, you could get to that center bearing on that 54-inch deck. Now, this is a 54-inch deck more. It's one of those, uh, let's look here, Merle... Merle's pick another American legend. Oh, Merle Haggard there, okay? Now, it's been a good mower. I bought it brand new. And, uh, I've never replaced the bearings on it at all. But, uh, I heard a little hissing, a little whistling sound in there. And the outside bearings are not that bad at all, but that center one right there, that big black pulley on it, if you spin it, let's see. Boy, that old grinding in there, that old grinding is shot. But uh, actually, the other ones have already taken the time to take these screws out. It's one, two there, and it's got a little hinge right here that it clips up on. You see that? See, that was making some noise too. So it's time to replace them. It's been a good more, but I just don't like the way they engineered it. I designed it to to replace the bearings. I mean, you can do the outer ones. You know, the left one and the right one. And uh center one, there's just no way. You've got to be able to get that pulley off and get that shaft out of there. Or the actual the housing that holds the shaft and the bearings to get them out. So, man, that's a big design flaw. But I have been looking at some of the other videos out there, and you can see that uh looks like the later ones, the bad boys, they, they've got a flip deck there that you can get right to that bearing. Let me also keep in mind that, let me mention, that while you're in here, check these old pulleys out. See, they're pretty quiet. But uh, while I've got the deck off, I'm going to go ahead and might take those loose and lubricate those to make sure they last as long as they should. To get the deck off is not an easy task for one person. Let me see if I can get you off some shots. It may not be easy. You're going to hear a saw in the background as my wife doing her crosses. She does a lot of woodworking. Get a suspend from the bottom of the mower by here. Here. And there's a couple of more on the other side if you see them over there. There's one in front. And there's another one back there in the back. Now this one right here is attached to your foot pedal to raise and lower the deck. You might also take a note that there are a couple of grease fittings underneath there, which I can't get you a shot of. There's one way over there, and one over here on the right side. So if you own one of these, you may want to make sure to keep greasing, keep greasing those things. But uh, yeah, it's a nightmare. You got to take the whole deck off to replace the center bearing. Uh, unlike other videos I've seen out there, guys that got these bad boys, they just flip this little seat up right here in this area, flip it up, and you get right to that bearing. Not the case on a 2015. There's going to be a lot of y'all going to say, well, it's not a 2015. Well, let me see if I can get in here. I don't know if I can get a good enough shot of it. But it's marked February, and it says Dom 2015-2016. So I'm assuming it's a 2015, because a lot of videos I've seen out there has 2016 on them. And their design on the deck's a little different. You'll also see that I removed that side cover on the left-hand side. Uh, you don't have to do that. I did it just to kind of clean all that out. Form a little maintenance on it before I put it out there and get it, you know, run it pretty hard. Just stick with me. Let me uh, start pulling the bearings apart and I'll show you what, what we did to replace it. Okay, at this point, what I did was I took a dolly and uh, I kind of hooked it up to the back or the top back section of the deck. And I've got the deck resting against it to kind of hold the deck up to make it easier to access the you know the bottom of the blade and the front of the uh, the front of the, the actual bearing and the and, and the back the top of the bearing. 
Now, if you look closer there, you're going to see that it wasn't just a bearing failure that caused all this noise, but uh, give you a good scenario. Let me get the piece of wire that I got wrapped up in it. See this wire right here? I was mowing along there up by the pine trees and it got wrapped all up in here. Uh, the old deck was making a noise before I hit it. It just put an end to mowing, so that's when I decided I better check the bearings and make sure they was okay. But yeah, I support it up on something similar. It doesn't have to be a dolly, but it just seems to work pretty good for me. Now, I got a Kubota tractor, but uh, I just didn't feel like getting it out of the shop to come over and pick this thing up, hold it up. The dolly, if you put the support against the back of it, you put the ledge underneath or the lip of the dolly underneath it, it'll kind of stand up there pretty, pretty secure, but always practice safety when you're doing this. One of the good things I found out about this mower, I think it's made up around Batesville, Arkansas, or up around the Arkansas area. And a lot of the stuff on it is standard sizes. Now, the actual bolt that takes the blade off is a one inch. Put your one inch socket on there, or 15 sixteenths maybe. Yeah, 15 sixteenths, I'm wrong there. But uh, let me get me a 15 sixteenths socket and we'll take the blade off. All right, guys, the next step is going to be you take your 15 16 or 24 millimeter might work just as well. And you're going to take this nut off of this bolt right here. Let me get my ratchet and my socket pad. I'm not going to go. Now, let me also say that, you know, guys, this may not be a real professional video. Uh, you know, we're just country folks out here, country living. Limited budget, limited income. And we're going to hear a lot of people out there say, well, you didn't do this right, you didn't do that right, you didn't follow manufacturing respect, you didn't do it. Well, you know, watch the videos, all I tell you. I mean, we, we're just trying to show you what we know. We're, we're no expert or professional at this. We're just going to get the job done the best way we can to get the more back up and running. So, you know, leave your comments, suggestions down below. I'll respond to them. Um, I know we may get some negative, we may get some positive, but it is what it is, and we're just doing the best we can with what we have. So take the blade loose. The old blade comes right off of there. You can look right here and see that, boy, that old wire tore that thing up. Now this is part of the shaft itself. So to to get this all loose, you're gonna have to go to the other side and take that pulley off of it. Get that bolt off of that pulley. And then you want to drive this shaft out of there if you want to replace them bearings. Now, you can buy the, these things several different ways. You can buy the full shaft assembly with the bearings in it, with this in it. And all you got to do is put the pulley on top and the keyway on it and put your, your threaded bolt back into it. Or you can do what we're going to do. And that's we're going to knock this shaft out of here from the other side once we get that pulley uh, bolt out of it. We're going to take a round piece of round stock or a socket or something put on top of there. We're going to knock this shaft completely out of this housing where it's just going to expose the bearings and a, a little lock collar, a little crush collar like you have on rear end differentials. But uh, well, let's get to that point next, guys. So, oh, guys, I'm sorry about that background noise, but old, old Mother Hen, she got that planer going over there. She's planing her boards for her, her grapevine trellises. Um, also, I got to put a note out. Hey, guys, you know, if you're my age, and yeah, you kind of crippled up a little bit, I always get you a stool to sit on. I made mine with my old sawmill. I cut a piece of pine log. And, uh, by the way, I got a sawmill. And I cut my own wood for my chicken pen, my chicken coop, and everything else. But yeah, get you a little makeshift stool or a chair. Sit down and rest yourself and make work a little bit easier. Okay, again, I apologize for all that background noise with Mother Hen over there playing with her wood. But uh, now we're on the front side of the deck, front section of the deck, and uh, you're going to have to uh, actually remove that bolt, which is not hard to do. I've already taken a three-quarter inch uh, socket, and I've loosened it up. It goes counterclockwise. Pretty simple. Take the bolt out of it. Now, don't think that this thing is just going to fall. This one pulley is just going to fall out of it. It's a press fit on there, and it's a little 316 inch keyway right here in this shaft. So, 
you're going to have to find something that's going to fit right inside there on the outer edge of that, inside that pulley, and you're going to have to hammer that thing out of there. I shoot a little liquid wrench or WD-40 on there before I start doing that. Okay, guys, now I've, I've been soaking that thing for about 10 minutes. Now, get you something that will fit right inside this thing like that, right there, inside that keyway and around that edge of that pulley. And uh, it should come loose pretty good. Okay, I see that was real loose compared to what I've been fighting. Uh, easy, easy to get off. Most of them get a hammer like crazy. And yeah, let me see if I can get down there and pull that thing out of there. I'm going to convince it some more. Gonna give me something here. Kind of extend it out there. We're going to pop it right out of here. All right, guys. This is what we're trying to get out of. This is a shaft. And you can see the old bearing. This part of the bearing right there. there ain't much left of that old bearing. But that is a shaft, the bearing rides here, the bearing rides here, and there's a little slip collar in the middle hip here. You bolt hose the pulley on this section right here. So, I probably missed that part of the camera. But again, this is where your blade mounts. The other part of your bearing rides here to here. Another part rides here to here. Your pulley rides up here. You got a keyway right here, don't lose your keyway. Remember we talked a little bit earlier about a key? This is the key. You don't want to lose that. Make sure that goes back in there. If not, that pulley is going to spin on that shaft when you hit something with that uh, blade. And it's going to be useless. It's not going to do its job. This is very easy to misplace. Keep track of it. Something else, guys. I want to always keep a can of WD-40. like this called it. Old days, DW-40. But uh, anything to loosen nuts or bolts, it's always handy to have. It makes your job a lot easier. It also keeps you from stripping out these nuts and bolts. So, you know, spray it liberally. I like to use it. Put it a little bit ahead of time. I think I'll be working on this other shaft over here. I'll shoot a little bit on it. So remember, I always spray something on there to keep the threads from pulling out on your nuts and bolts. And all right, we're back to the next step. Next, next step is going to be we're going to remove these four bolts over here. And I've already taken two of them out. There's one here, two, three, and four. Now they're 9 sixteenths, you take a socket, wrench, whatever you have suitable to do the job with, and uh, just take the nuts off, and these bolts right here, once you get them loosened up enough, they'll fall inside. So your bolt will fall out. This is where you need a buddy. Well, you better have long arms. Because this makes it a little difficult to get underneath there, even the way I got it set up. That's what happened when we old and got wore out stuff, you know what I mean? There we go. Keep track of your nuts and stuff. Next step is we're going to knock this whole housing completely out of there. It's going to probably hit the ground, but it's okay. It ain't going to hurt it none. Let me grab a hammer and a little block of wood. Something anywhere as close to it. Now it's going to be hard to see, but I'm going to try to zoom it in as much as I can. Inside, the middle of those two bearings, the top one and the bottom, is like a little collar. Be careful when you're hammering this out, guys. You don't want to ruin this housing because it's aluminum. And it's probably pretty easy to break. I'm just going to use an old board here and knock it out. There you go. Came right out of there. All right. Yeah, I would definitely say that uh, this thing was actually pretty shot. Look at the inside of that. There's not much, no bearings left. There's a couple of rollers, ball bearings. But uh, this thing has probably cut, well, I can't see how many yards, but it's cut a lot. And this is a center bearing. This one actually, there's part of the bearing, whatever's left of it. Now we can just hope that the 
the actual housing itself is still salvageable. If not, we'll have to buy a complete shaft housing assembly. Uh, next step, we're going to try to take this. This is the outer part of the bearing. We're going to try to knock it out from the opposite side. There is the collar I was telling you about. Right there. Don't make sure you put that back in the middle between the two bearings. It actually rides inside there. It already fell out of there. But it rides up against actually that part of the bearing. Right there. So get you something, get down inside there, some kind of round punch, knock that bearing out. Once you got it out, then you'll have this side opened up and put a punch back directly in here and knock the other bearing out. And then we'll continue with the installing the new bearings, putting this piece back in, inside, and then going back with assembly. Well, we're going to try to knock this thing out again. I don't have a very good shot here. Uh, there's not a whole lot of light. But just get you a, a punch, something preferably a little bit bigger than that. But uh, that's all I have at the time. And, and set it down inside there. Like I said, I'm not going to be able to show you all the inside internal knocking these guts out. But just kind of tap on one side, move the punch over, tap on the other side. Kind of work in quadrants. Just like I'm doing. Oh, there it went. I'm going to pick it up now. Down in there all that solid dust. But actually, this little bearing here is still intact, but it is very dry and it's hard. So that's one of the bearings. Now then take it, flip it back over. And when you're clamping it in the vise, don't put a lot of clamping pressure on the vise itself. You don't want to squeeze that, you know, to where it compresses against that bearing or whatever's left of that bearing. Just let it sit in there. If it falls out, just pick it up and do it again. So do the same thing. Make sure you got that glasses on because anytime you're using a punch or a chisel, you know, you always want to protect your eyes. A lot of times that old outer part of the bearing will chip off and break. And rotate it around and get you another quadrant of it. Lubricate it up, like I said, with some good old WD-40. Try not to scar the inside of the housing. I mean, you're not going to not. You're going to scar it up so. Rotate it again, 25%. Keep working the thing out of it. You know, you keep working around little quarters, you'll see that old outer cage of that bearing will come out off of it. Next step is to clean all this up. I polish this edge up a little bit here. It's kind of sharp. I can buff it down a little bit. But there's really nothing wrong with the housing itself with the bearing rides in here is fine. So that's the main thing to be concerned about. Uh, when you put the shaft back on it, it kind of covers this area up here anyway. Hey guys, what I did next was I took a little sandpaper and I went inside this bore of this where this bearing is going to ride and I cleaned that out. Uh, that way, you know, it's, when you put the bearing in there, the fit will be a little bit better and it'll go a lot easier. Polish it out on the inside bore, polish out the outer edges if you've got a situation like this to alleviate any problems it may, may cause, which it shouldn't cause any. Same thing on this side. Polish that bore out all the way around. That way that bearing will slide right down in there if you put some grease on it. Tap it right back in place.